Okay, so let's uh, get started. Um, we're going to talk uh, this morning in the session about Transmart 16.2. Uh, this project was initiated uh, probably about six months ago uh, after the 16.1 release. 16.1 uh, uh, was interesting because we're trying to really formalize a lot more in terms of our development processes, you know, kind of managing you know, check-ins and, and the uh, movement to the final release um, in bringing in some automated testing and some little more uh, rigor to the, to the release process. Um, you know, the, we, we talked yesterday about driving more users to the system and if you don't have a system that's reliable and installable, it doesn't matter how many features you have. Uh, and so we've really tried to put some effort to this. Um, the difference in 16.2, 16.1 was largely an internal changes and not a lot of external contribution. Uh, the difference here with 16.2 is it's almost entirely code being contributed by ex outside organizations, uh, you know, in the whole open source community uh, vein. And so we needed to think about, you know, how we were going to bring uh, all these pieces together and, and manage it maybe a little more effectively than we've done in the past. Um, you can see from the agenda, you know, we have a number of organizations who were developing pieces uh, and these needed to get integrated uh, in some kind of rational way uh, into the system. And uh, that's what, you know, from the foundation side, we had to think about how we wanted to, to try to manage that. Uh, so, you know, the goals of this release were really to create within our new release, um, you know, protocols, you know, a platform that had all these external things coming in. Uh, and we wanted to make sure we got this uh, released well, our goal was to release it, uh, I think, probably by September, but uh, we didn't get that done. But, you know, we're, we're actually driving to, we'll certainly have it hopefully by the end of this, this year, hopefully in November, in fact, uh, with a number of, of target features, which we'll talk about today. Um, we put this PMC process, Project Management Committee, um, into place um, with, uh, you know, hopefully some, you know, putting some oversight into what we're doing. The primary role is to, you know, kind of make sure that we're following good processes and, you know, that we're meeting the goals of the, the eh, there must be a timer on this, meeting the goals of the release, um, you know, and, you know, when, when we had issues to, to have a group that would, would look at this, you know, uh, and, and look at the release and make sure that it, it, what it was doing was, uh, was reasonable. Um, the PMC members for this one uh, included basically a representative from each contributing group uh, as well as the, um, the foundation. So, yeah. And a number of these folks are here to talk with us today about their, their particular pieces. Um, we did put, you know, kind of a, you know, what, are, what does it take to, to contribute something to the foundations? You know, to the platform, you know, it, it is open source. Anybody can contribute uh, anything, but um, we wanted to have some kind of a, you know, reasonable structure here in what we're doing and, you know, trying to get, um, you know, be sure that when someone contributes something, uh, we had a chance to, to look at it and, you know, make sure that it was, you know, uh, didn't break other things, that it had, you know, some data that we could test it with, some documentation, et cetera. Uh, so our responsibility was to make sure that, you know, we could do some of the testing, make sure the integration all worked and it was pulling together the, the pieces. Um, and then the contributor, you know, the responsibility was to, to make sure that, you know, there, there was documentation for what they were doing. Um, they gave us some test cases uh, and, you know, as defects get uh, found that they would actually then go and fix their code. Uh, it wasn't for the, tr for the foundation to have to fix everybody's code, which is not practical at this point. So. We also put a strategy in place where, you know, people had their own sandbox where they were in GitHub that would build their, their piece. Um, we then built a, uh, an alpha uh, platform, which we call, the, uh, you know, our uh, internal, you know, pre-release that uh, we've been pulling together. And so all the code as it's been finished from each contributor has gone into this alpha piece uh, and then some testing done. Uh, and uh, Terry Weymouth had been doing this. Now Peter Rice has really been uh, ably managing this. Um, and as each component that we'll talk about has was finished, it was moved into this alpha branch. And what we're building today is this, you know, a complete alpha branch. Once it's completely code complete, this will become the beta test that we'll, we'll use um, as we move forward. So the different features as uh, Keith went through yesterday are, are listed here. And what we're gonna try to do is go through each of these with a little more detail uh, in a few minutes by the, either the contributors or a, uh, 
a surrogate. Uh, Peter's gathered up all the, the pieces for the folks who couldn't make it here this week, and they'll, uh, he'll present some of their, their work. Um, the statuses that uh, were, were almost complete, um, the final pieces, the, the la latest piece that came in was the Pfizer GWAS, which has just gotten built in and going through some testing. Uh, the last piece is the, the Thomson Reuters uh, P-Link work uh, that uh, Stephen will describe, uh, and that's uh, getting ready, I guess, to be moved in. And once that's done, we'll have basically a code complete uh, version, hopefully in the next um, week or so or two, uh, we can get that done. Um, <clears throat> we are, though, uh, and then so beta testing will begin early November, we hope. Um, but um, here today, I think we are, we are going to make available the current uh, alpha branch. You know, uh, Peter's trying to do some last changes to, to get it ready, but we're going to make that publicly available so that if those of you who are uh, maybe a little uh, s stronger of spirit uh, want to try it out, you can start to actually look at it. And I think it's time for us to get some external testing going on this and uh, see as we can get this moving. Uh, the timeline has been, you know, it's not been that long, but um, we're, we've been really pushing to get to uh, the beta test. Uh, we are today now going to do a preview release uh, in the next couple days and hopefully get to the beta testing. And we really are hoping to get this done uh, by the end of November if we can. You know, obviously, you know, I, I really feel strongly you don't release, you know, bad, a bad uh, piece of software. So it has to get to a, a level of quality that we're all satisfied with. Uh, and uh, we've been building you know, these versions uh, as each piece has come in to, to do the integration testing and all. But, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that uh, and the PMC has to agree that, it, uh, you know, we're at a sufficient level of quality to release it. Um, but we're, we're trying to drive this, you know, hopefully within the next, you know, few weeks. So with that, um, I think we'd like to start going through these piece by piece and um, talk about, um, you know, where we are. So Adriana uh, Barbosa de Silva from the University of Luxembourg. Going to talk about um, SmartR.